When I first started developing spark mutts, I had a very, very simple combo system with only a few light attacks. This system was relying on just three animations that would play in sequence. You can see here the system looks very stiff and very constrained, where you don't really have a lot of movement and the animations they weren't really that great to be honest. So now after reformulating how this system is working, I have light attacks as well as heavy attacks that can be combined within each other, as well as special attacks that you can use that gives this extra feeling to the combat as a whole. Let's first go through everything you can do with this new combo system. And then I'm going to go over how I did it and the possibilities that you can have with this system. <laughs> If you click with the left mouse button, you can then execute a light attack. If you press it again, you can make a chain of light attacks. You can also do this with heavy attacks by using the right mouse button. Every one of these attacks can then be chained in between each other, like you see on this image over here. So from light attack 1, I can go to heavy attack 1, then from heavy attack 1, I can go to light attack 2 or heavy attack 2. One game that served as inspiration for me in terms of combat is God of War. I really like how the system is very engaging and the combat feels very satisfying to pull off. In light of that, I had this idea where if you hold down the light attack button, you can then throw enemies in the air, where they will stay for a couple of seconds. From there, you would be able to execute the ground combos on the enemies while they are stunned in the air. Notice how the character is adjusting to the enemy's height. This is a tweak that I made where I get the current focused enemy and I make the player's spine adjust to face the enemy a little bit better. So if the enemy is above you, your character is going to look up. But also, if you are fighting smaller enemies, your character is going to look down, making it easier for you to land your attacks. Now here is where it gets interesting. If you hold down the right mouse button, you can then throw enemies in the air, but you will also jump with them and then you can start aerial combos. While in the air, you can execute a light attack combo, dealing low mild damage, but if you hold down the right mouse button again, you can do a ground slam move, bringing the enemy back to the floor and dealing damage to nearby enemies too. You can also execute a heavy attack combo, that ends on a finisher that is also a ground slam. All of these special attacks where you have to hold down the button can be executed at any point during the ground combos. So that means that you can start your combo on the floor, bring it on the air, and then bring enemies back to the floor. The last special attack that you can execute is if you are sprinting and you press the light or the heavy attack button, you can execute a special starter. So if you press the light attack button, you get a great starter for your ground combo instead of the regular light attack. Alternatively, you can also use the heavy attack, which is a great starter for an aerial combo. From this, you can build your own combos and slowly get a better feel for what works for you. It also helps to avoid repetition, because if you have a bunch of different combo options, you won't be seeing the same combo over and over and over again. Another really cool thing that I added is that when you are attacking, your weapon gets blurry. This is a movement blur that I got from a plugin. I programmed it so that it gets dynamically more intense the quicker your attack is, as well as to stop when you're done attacking. Now that I showed how the mechanic is working, I'm going to go over how I made it. <clears throat> a couple of devlogs ago, I showed a system that I made for the items in my game. In the system, you have the main class for the base item, which then spawns a bunch of children for the different types of items you can have in-game, using the principle of inheritance on programming. For the attacks, I'm using a very similar approach, sort of. I made an object that is called individual attack, and then inside of this individual attack, I have an animation montage. This is the actual attack animation that it is going to play on this specific attack. I then also have another thing that I call a player input composite. This is a struct that contains a bunch of other individual attack classes, one for each input type. So from this, I can create, for example, the light attack one, 
and this class will then have the animation for it, as well as links to what is next, like the Light Attack 2 or Heavy Attack 1. This way I can have any sort of combos that I could possibly want, all being guided by the player input, so light attacks, light attacks during our aerials, light attacks during sprinting, so the player input is going to drive this combo system. As for the logic on how this works, I'm still using the melee combat system that I was using before, but I made some several changes to the component itself. This component will now define which attack you are playing and what is next, based on your input. Another vital part to make this work is to add a montage notify called connection inside every attack montage. This way I can define at which point the component should be playing the next combo piece. So yeah, I mean, the system isn't that complex, but I'm pretty happy with it and I think I'll be able to make use of it throughout the whole development of the project. It is very, very customizable and it is going to suit all of my needs. Now, speaking of the melee combo component, another thing that I'm working on is combat with multiple targets. Originally, I wanted to have the system completely focusing the camera in one individual enemy and then you could cycle through the enemies using a key or maybe the mouse or maybe the analog stick. But recently I changed my mind on that a bit. I feel like games like Spider-Man or the, the new Batman games, they have a very good combat system and a very good feeling for it. So I wanted to see if I could try to get some of that as well as inspiration for my game. So right now when you start fighting, your camera will be free but your character will focus on the enemy. Also, if you are in the middle of a combo, you can quickly change targets based on your movement input. I still gotta work on that because the player is sliding around a lot. I could maybe have a moving feet animation that I can dynamically apply so that every time that you move during a combo, the character is going to run to the enemy instead of just sliding mid attack. There are some new fundamental changes to the camera system as well. Now the camera zooms out based on the enemy size. So if you're fighting a boss or a really big enemy, the camera is going to zoom out a lot more. Another thing that I'm working on is the new tool holding system. I am a real fan of the Minecraft action bar layout and how it is very quick and snappy to just use the scroll of the mouse to change the item that you're focusing on. But I'm also a really big fan on how you can change your items in games like Valheim. You can choose your main hand and your off hand. So for example, you can have a torch on your off hand and then a mace on your main hand. But if you think about it, those two systems, they don't really mix that well. Sure, you have a way to put your off hand items in your hand in Minecraft, but it is not very quick and intuitive and you have to open up your menu so that you can choose what item you want on your off hand. So the system that I came up with basically works like this. If you use the mouse scroll normally, you can change your main hand item. This works just like in Minecraft, but if you hold the Q key on your keyboard while scrolling, you can change your offhand item, and they are marked by the R and the L keys, so as in right hand and left hand. This way you can pick up a lamp, maybe pick up a gun on your offhand, potions, anything. The Q key can also work if you use an item, like by right clicking with your mouse. So if you have a potion, you can have the potion on your offhand and mid combat you can use the potion. I am still not sure if this is going to be the absolute final system that I'm going to use in the game because sometimes it is not intuitive. Like I did the system and I still have some trouble sometimes trying to find which item is on my main hand and which item is on my off hand and trying to exchange those two quickly can be a little bit cumbersome. If you have any ideas on how to make this better, just throw it in the comments and I'll be sure to respond. One thing that I'm going to say is that combat is like a dance and you need two to tango. So my next big step that I'm going to work towards now is to have a better enemy AI that has big telegraphed attacks. So after I finish making this enemy, I'm going to focus on making procedural dungeons so that I can make this new combat really flow and kind of put that to the test and see if the game is actually fun to play. From there, I want to publish the game on Steam so that I can give you guys free keys so that you can play before the game is even in early access. So call it a pre-alpha. You will be able to test the game for yourself and then give me some feedback on what you think could improve on this game and you guys could be an active voice in the development process. So if you want to get a free key to the pre-alpha of the game, 
join the Discord server. And as soon as I have the game on Steam, I'm going to be dishing out a lot of keys for you guys there. Also, don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam if you haven't. Both links are going to be on the pinned comment down below. Subscribe to my channel for more game development videos. I'm Leo, signing off.